It won't start, man. Man, blow on it, man. Come on. Get this thing going. I'm all day. I've been back at work in like 15 minutes. There we go. Hey folks, thanks for checking out Quick Charge TV. Not your average video game show. Isn't that right, Tom? No, not at all. Lock yourselves in and get ready to have some fun with your old boys, Reed Price and Tom O'Donnell. Ow! That's right, Tom's pumped up, I'm pumped up. We got some gaming going on right now. We're gonna keep it flowing, but we want you guys to sit tight and check out our video game show. It's full of all kinds of great stuff like Healthy Gamer with Tom O'Donnell, interviews on the street. We do all kinds of great stuff, man. That's mm -hmm. what Quick Charge TV is all about. But you're gonna have to excuse us because we're about to get our game on and I'm about to kick Tom's butt. Not even a chance in hell, bro. Stay tuned, more Quick Charge TV coming up here. Thanks to games, whenever my dog runs away, I play Ponya Song on my ocarina. Thanks to games like Mafia 2, I've been extorting money from my grandma's antique shop. 75 bucks this Tuesday, Grandma, or some of those antique cups are gonna go smashy, smashy. Thanks to games, I've learned that sometimes barrel rolling is faster than just running. Thanks to games like Dance Dance Revolution, I now believe that Asians cut the meanest rug in the world. Thanks to games like Splinter Cell, whenever I head to bed and turn off the lights, I sneak in like I'm Sam Fisher. Thanks to games like Super Mario, I get very confrontational when I see a turtle. Got kicked out of nine pet shops this week. I, of course, had a ball peen hammer. to another episode of The Healthy Gamer with Tom O'Donnell. Today, we're gonna to be playing a lot of Wii Tennis. And you know what we like to do? We like to loosen up before we get into our game so we don't pull nothing. With tennis, what I like to do is a little thing called the robot. You might think it's hacky, but you might also be an idiot. Salute the troops. Uh. Healthy gamer, Tom O'Donnell. Quick Charge TV's top five hardest games of all time. I'm gonna start off with a disclaimer for this list, folks. It's only five, you're gonna disagree. So sit down, buckle up, get ready. If you have any games that you don't see on the list, let us know about it, we wanna hear from you. Starting off, Guitar Hero. This game is on the list for one reason and one reason only, expert mode. And if you can rock out with this mode confidently, then you, my friend, are a god amongst men. Now everybody likes to rip on people for being good at Guitar Hero. I respect it, it takes a lot of work to get good at this game. Kudos to you for the dedication. But there's gonna be people out there that are saying, why don't you pick up a real guitar? And to them people I say, buzz off. If you feel confident playing a plastic guitar in your underwear in your grandma's basement, I say do it. Guitar Hero, number five on our top five hardest games of all time. Coming in at number four on our top five hardest games of all time list is one of my childhood favorites, Paperboy for the Nintendo. I can't say this game without smiling, and I don't know why I'm smiling, because this game was ridiculously hard. All you gotta do is drive up and down the street and deliver paper. Easy, right? Hold on, not so fast. This game was ridiculous because the developers threw in all kinds of obstacles. I don't know what they were thinking. There was break dancers, there was dudes walking across the street with panes of glasses, there was dogs that was chasing you, there was a grim reaper for crying out loud. I mean, 
you had to avoid all this stuff. And of course you're in this weird isometric upwards angle and you had to throw the paper to people's houses only on your left. Apparently nobody lived on the right side of the road. It's a little bit ridiculous. And then once you got to the end of the street, what did they hit you with? An obstacle course. Paperboy, number four. Dust this one off if you want to be frustrated. Number three on our top five hardest games of all time is one of the first games I ever remember playing as a child. I'm talking about Donkey Kong. Now of course Donkey Kong up at the top was throwing barrels down at you and they would come sliding down and bouncing and you could jump over them or you can go under them. It was hard. Very hard. Very, very hard. If you got to the top and actually saved the princess, you were awesome because it was difficult to do. The levels started getting harder, the barrels got faster, it was crazy. Donkey Kong, I don't even want to talk about this very much anymore. I'm thinking about what I thought was good childhood memories, but really, it was just a lot of hard work. Number two on our top five hardest games of all time. Folks, talking about when we live. They're turtles, they're frogs, they're toads. Talking about battle toads for the Super Nintendo. Great childhood memories, but of course, the game was really hard. Really hard. One of my favorite things to do in this game though was if you were having difficulties or frustrated or if you were just an ass, all you had to do was beat up your own player. Two player game, you can knock the heck out of the other guy. It was fun, I loved it. And then after that you'd die because it was difficult. Games didn't mess around back then. That's why old people go on about how we were weak kids and now we're getting older and we're going on about the kids of today's generation being weak because the games are so stinking easy. Tell those kids to play Battletoads, that game was ridiculous. And that's why it's number two on Quick Charge TV's top five hardest games of all time. Number one on our top five hardest games of all time, Ninja Turtles. This game was ridiculous. I thought it was the coolest back in the day. You run around and then you find sewers that go down and then boom, 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 boom. There's people coming from everywhere, stuff flying at you, weird creatures, you don't know what's happening. This game made me mad. I just played it the other day, it was ridiculous. It's number one on the list because there was difficulties in this game for no good reason, it was just hard. That's how games were back in the day because people didn't have too much technology, they didn't have too much development power to make things make sense. So it's like, well, let's make this game crazy difficult. That'll get the kids talking. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Ninja Turtles, number one on our top five hardest games of all time. Quick tip for you, if you're gonna use one of the turtles, use Donatello, he had the long bow staff, it was awesome. He said, Kapuya, Kapuya! And your boy that hell just came in. Well, what happened was uh, I worked at a video game studio and I was always joking around with the guys at work. We were cracking each other up. So that got us all of us interested in possibly performing on an amateur night at the Kitchener Yuck Yucks. Then I was asked to audition for a video game TV show. Didn't get the part, but got a lot of experience and that was kind of what pushed me towards actually making a decision to do stand-up comedy because when I was talking to the producers, I said, I'm gonna try stand-up. Really, I thought I was talking out of my rear end, but uh, that pushed me to actually get on stage and I did it and uh, I haven't looked back since. I see some of you looking at me, you're thinking, well, if he's black, he ain't that black. <laughs> uh, no, I get it all the time though, but I'm used to it, man. I'm used to it. Truth is though, I used to be a lot darker than this back in the day, a lot darker. Like back in the day, I was about as black as Don Cheadle in a dark alley. Yeah. Uh, it's cool, man. It's really cool. I've worked at a few different studios, one in Quebec, one in Waterloo and Toronto. Uh, we've made some cool games, a lot of stuff for kids. It's a lot of fun working on video games, but everyone always thinks it's the best job in the world, and I gotta be honest right away and be like, it comes with the good and the bad, just like anything. Uh, it's not as cool as you might think, but I do gotta say, there is a lot of, a lot of perks from working in the video game industry. Yeah, actually, absolutely, having the, the 3D artist background, the art background, 
Uh, like I went to school for fine arts, then I went to Humber College in Toronto for, for video game uh, 3D art. Uh, having that background, a lot of arts has actually helped me uh, kind of expand, how do you say that? It sounds kind of corny, but expand your mind, expand your horizons, not be afraid to go uh, places you've never been before, uh, and to take chances. Uh, and it's mostly not for me being a creative person, but it's actually uh, seeing other people through those through school and uh, over the years and being at game studios, seeing other creative people has really helped me expand my own mind, so to speak. So uh, yeah, I, I feel like I kind of uh, attacked the stage in, in a bit of a, a different way because of my unique background coming from video game industry and a fine arts background and uh, always being a creative person. I found comfort on stage through that. In Hamilton, they have a whole other approach in Hamilton, man. I was there and I saw this dude picking up a girl in the street after the club. It's simple. He just goes, hey, get in the back of the van. <laughs> that was poetry. Poetry. Yeah. My dad is from Hamilton and that is how he courted my mother. It's beautiful. And we're gonna get right into this game right now. We're going out here with a lot of intensity. You wanna have your smack talk up. You wanna be like Johnny McEnroe out there. So like I like to start off with the first serve saying like something like, eat it sister. Boom. Now this game right here, it works out your triceps in your chestal region. Oh, and I just lost that there, but that's all right. But yeah, this game focuses on your biceps right in this region right here. And you know, like, it's a pretty intense game. I feel like I'm going to stroke out right now. Like, actually have a stroke. But uh, that's all part of the game. And if you're not feeling like you're going to stroke out, then you ain't playing it right. <sighs> that being said, now it's 30 nothing. See, I'm not paying attention because I'm talking to you guys. Usually, this would never happen to me. Boom! Working out the wrist. Letting the wrist go. That's what you let it, that's how you call it. You just call it letting the wrist go. Boom! Your wrist little region right here has a little muscle, I like to call it uh, the flex capacitor. It runs up through your wrist into your hands like a V shape. And working that out uh, is really beneficial to your health and to your video game playing. And they're playing, they're playing pretty good ball right now. We're gonna, and we're gonna sneak attack them. You're gonna let the guy from the front hit. Boom! Oh, miss it again. That was Wii Tennis, everybody, with Tom O'Donnell on The Healthy Gamer. Remember, if you didn't almost have a stroke, then you ain't doing it right. I know I did. Welcome to another segment of Gaming with the Girlfriend. This is where I give all the fellas advice on how they can get their girlfriend or their significant other to play video games with them. It's a little bit difficult sometimes and if you find yourself having trouble, I'm gonna give you perfect games that you can try. You'll have your girlfriend on the couch with you in no time. This week, I'm bringing you a strange one. It's unique. It is called Frobisher Says. It's free on the PlayStation Vita. You can download it. It's weird, but it'll bring you guys together in a kooky, strange, kind of lovey-dovey way. I play this game with my girlfriend quite a bit. At first she was skeptical, then once we got into it, she started loving it. A lot. It's one of those games that sticks in your head. You'll be saying, Frobisher Says, all the time. Check it out, you'll know what I mean. Frobisher Says is a mini game, a lot like WarioWare back on the older systems. You play all these mini games, it's crazy fast paced, you gotta do these certain things and figure out how to beat them in ridiculously fast amount of time. But it's one of those games where it's so kooky and so much fun and so over the top and so fast paced that it's gonna bring you and your girlfriend together. And again, you're playing it on the Vita, so she's gonna be cuddled up beside you. That's very key in gaming with the girlfriend. And Frobisher says is definitely a winner for getting your girlfriend on the couch with you. You have to check this one out if you have a PlayStation Vita, without a doubt. Here at Quick Charge TV, we love hearing from our fans. I actually got a VHS tape in from a good guy here. Uh, 
the letter was a little bit weird that he sent us. Uh, apparently, we know each other. Uh, we went to public school, looks like. Uh, sorry, I don't remember. Can't really make out your name because you spelt it in blood. Classy. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, hear what this guy has to say. Hello, Tom. Hello, Reed. Thank you for having me on your show. Um, you want me to tell you my favorite video game? Only play one. That is Tetris, of course. You, um, you build up blocks, best graphics, colors, and you, you try and assemble them in such a formation you get four lines in a row. Love the game. And of course you ask, what you play it on? Very good question, my friends. Game Boy Color. I used to have Game Boy No Color, not very good. Then I get to this, Tetris, only game. Lots of people give me uh, for gifts, different games. I say, only play one, Tetris. <laughs> great game. Um, Reed, you're a great man, beautiful man. Tom, not so much. He, um, I would never say, Tom, you should lose weight. I would never say, Tom, easy on the buffet. That is rude. But I will tell you one thing, Tom. Get your act together. Anyway, thanks for having me on show. Love you both. Huge fan of show. And every time I go to sleep, I dream of show. That you guys are on. Bless your hearts. He said, Kapooya, Kapooya! And your boy that hell just came in. Hey folks, welcome to another segment of Crank Gaming. Don't know if you know yet, but in this segment, me and Tom go head to head. We play a game, this week it's Street Fighter 4, and whoever loses has to call somebody of the winner's choosing. And the winner gets to tell them what they want the loser to say on the phone. So the stakes are high, because we're poor, that's how we bet. Yes, yes sir. So get ready, Region, because we're coming after you in this episode of Crank Gaming. Let's do it, who are you gonna be, buddy? I think I'm going to be a Vega. I will be Sega. She's got knife hands. Knife hands. Oh. Knife hands. Like that. Idiot. Here we go. This is it, folks. Two rounds. Whoever wins two of three is the champ. Mask on. I'll tell you, if I met Sagat or Vega in a dark alley, I would prefer to meet, well, Vega, I don't know. See he the might swing both did ways. There? Um, you're pretty, uh, like, you're focused, man. You're usually just chirping. I gotta win this. <laughs> no way. How about you that just one, bow? buddy? You just bowed, didn't you? I did. That was respect to all. Get ready to bow to your Street. sensei. This was real life, you'd be that guy in the back with the camera snapping photos, like a huge loser, and then uploading them to Pinterest or something lame like that. How do you kick and stuff? <laughs> so sorry. Let the people know how you feel about that. I feel cheated. 
feel like I need to go sit in the shower. The water just beating down on my back and me sobbing. Folks, stay tuned after the break because we're going to get Tom calling somebody. It's going to be fun. You don't want to miss this, trust me. Is there any protection there from Dr. Robotnik? Okay, well, that's actually um, like a fictional thing, so I don't think that would happen to your boa constrictor if you were to purchase one. Tell Tom stuff to say. That's smart. Uh, yeah. Hi. I. I was. Uh, are you okay there? Yeah. Um, I was just wondering. Do you guys have snakes? Uh, yes. We have a large variety of snakes. What were you looking for? Um, I, I'm not too sure. Just maybe like a boa constrictor or something. I. I have another question. Um. You, you, you know the game Sonic the Hedgehog? Well, you know, Dr. Robotnik used to go in and uh, you had to turn all the animals into different sorts of things. Like, uh, some would be like little robots and stuff like that, but they would like try to kill Sonic. I was wondering, do you have that guys have anything there that would defer that from happening to your animals? Like, is there any protection there from Dr. Robotnik? Okay, well that's actually um, like a fictional thing, so I don't think that would happen to your boa constrictor if you were to purchase one. Yeah, well, you never know sometimes, right? You gotta, uh, um, do you guys have chinchillas? Uh, we do have chinchillas, yes. Okay, um, now you don't have the chinchillas next to the snakes, do you? <laughs> no, uh, they're at the opposite end of the store, actually. Okay. And hamsters and gerbils and that sort of thing. Have you figured out yet that this is a prank call? <laughs> yes. Okay. You're okay. just playing along with it now? Yeah. I actually am crazy. Yeah. I, I had assumed that initially when you were yeah, talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, thank you very much. Um, stay out of the snake pit. Uh, okay. They like to bite and keep the chinchillas away from the snakes. Okay. Okay. Do that. okay All right. See you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I think she likes you. <laughs> yeah, I think so do you, actually. That's another episode of Quick Charge TV in the books, folks. Thank you very much for checking out Quick Charge, not your average video game show. I like that tagline. Yeah, me too. You guys didn't see this, but I just whooped Reed Price's butt in Call of Duty. It was crazy. It was like a little kid in Zeller's with a chocolate bar, and his dad's like, put it back. And the kid's like, no. And he's like, put it back. <laughs> oh, Tommy boy. Talk, 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 talk. Well, look, enjoy the win. I'm a good guy. I think that you played well, whatever. Mm -hmm. But let's just put that behind us. We got more gaming to do right now. We hope you guys got some gaming to do at home. I'm going to spank Tom's butt here. I'm all warmed up now. So yappity yap, 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 Tom. Good for you, buddy. Thanks for watching Quick Charge TV, not your average video game show. Be sure to check us out on YouTube, on Twitter, on the web, all that good stuff. And we're really thankful that they watch our show, aren't we, Tom? No. Do another one. No, 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 what I'm saying. What I'm saying. Peace. Sorry, Steve.